That brings us to the next Pollyanna principle. Pollyanna principle number five. Strength builds upon our strengths, not our weaknesses. Again, this is one of those, yeah, okay, so. And if we're strong, we're not going to feel that fear that might lead us to not walk our talk. So are we strong? <laughs> no, we're not. We have no money. <laughs> and we have no volunteers. And we have no good board members because the good board members, they sit on that board over there. They're not going to sit on our board because we're just small and grassroots and they all want to be on the big high profile board. And the board members we have, well, there some of them are okay, but they don't know any rich people. And so how are we going to get any money if our board members don't know any rich people? And <laughs> It just sucks to be us, doesn't it? <laughs> we know that strength builds on strength when it comes to our community members. We know that if we've seen the work of the Asset-Based Community Development Institute, if you've seen strength-based initiatives like St. Luke's is doing so well in Phoenix, you know that if we build on the strength of our community members, we build something really strong. And yet we don't think of that internally at all. Our community members, they're real strong. We're horrible. It's just really, really bad out there. Well, is it? Could it possibly be that bad out there? Do we not have anything positive to build on? The further we look at how negatively we think about ourselves, we realize that we have actually created a label for our work the label we use for ourselves that is a screaming banner of negativity and need. We are nonprofit organizations. We are nonprofit organizations. What does that mean we're talking about? It means we're talking about what we're not. And what are we not? Our name says we have no money. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> about reinforcing our feelings of fear. <laughs> so what we need to be conscious of as we move forward is that language counts just like it counts with our clients. Language counts with us. We are community benefit organizations. We are social benefit organizations. We are humanity benefit organizations. We exist to do something positive and we do something positive. So we need to first stop calling ourselves something that's really, really negative and really self-inflicting. Now when we're out in the world, I'm sure many of you have sort of heard that, that sort of expression, all those rich people, they all stick together. My rich people, they all stick together. We're hearing that a lot now with all the, the debates about the stimulus package on the Hill. Rich people, they, they pretty much stick together, right? We ever hear that poor people stick together? <laughs> we don't, do we? Because when you've got nothing, you're really closed in. You're really trying to focus on yourself and you're trying to survive. When we think we have nothing, that's what we do. We build those walls. So those, build, those walls that we talked about before, we've built them. We have built them. They may exist legally, but we are separate legally and part of a whole. If we look at the cells in our body, they are separate living organisms, part of something bigger. We can only feel that when we feel strong. And so if it is true that strength builds on our strength and that we can accomplish amazing things when we are strong, what does that make possible? Here's what we have found. We have a ton of strength internally within our organizations that we just forget about. We have assets to build on that are incredible and that when Dimitri and I have worked with clients in the past and we start showing them their assets and eliciting from them, well, tell us about this and tell us about that, they all, to the client we've ever had, look at us and say, we had no idea we had this much. Let me share with you some of the assets that you have and you will find these in the Pollyanna Principles. We have mission-related assets. And that is what we do, the work we do. We have human assets. That is who we know, who your board knows, who your staff knows, who your volunteers know. And I'm not just talking about the fact that they may know the mayor, or they may know the police chief, or the school principal. 
they may know just regular people who live in their neighborhood who have so much to share with your organization. Our physical assets and resources are what we have. It could be a parking lot. It could be a room. It could be computers. It could be a copy machine. A friend of mine has told me that one of the most valued assets in a community that people overlook is your copy machine. How many people in your community, especially low-income people who are constantly having to fill out forms and triplicate, could use a copy machine? Wow, my copy machine is a tool of engagement. <laughs> and finally, we have community assets, which is the mission assets, the human assets, and the physical assets of everybody else. It's a room like this, and all of the facilities that Prescott College has, but that everybody else has. It's community centers, it's libraries. What we show in the Pollyanna Principles is two different things. The first is how we can build programs based entirely on shared resources. And so if we think about, well, you know what, we're going to need to have transportation, and we think, well, you know what, there's trucks in our community and people are already running around. Well, we're going we're to need to store stuff. You know, there's warehouses and somebody already has one. So how do we build programs on shared community assets and resources? That's in the Pollyanna Principles. But the other thing we also show is how you can build income streams on the assets you already have. And I see some crinkled brows. Income streams? How could we do that? How do wealthy people stay wealthy? Do they work for, does Bill Gates work for a living? Spend lots of time working, puts in, you know, 20 hour days like we do in the community benefit sector, huh? No, Bill Gates and wealthy individuals make their money off what they already have. And so if we look, as we describe in the book, different ways of assessing how might we generate more resource off of what we have, we find we have tons to work with. And when we have that feeling of wealth, we can start to interconnect more fluidly with others, all aimed at that future we want to create. We frequently hear about doing strength-based work and asset-based work and values-based work as if it's the end-all and be-all. And I need to remind you that if we focus on the means without focusing on visionary end results, we'll do strength-based work aimed at today's problems instead of strength-based work aimed at the future that we want to create. 